You'll install a parquet floor because it's a beautiful and durable product. If you want to enjoy it for a long time, you have to make sure it's been installed the right way. In this case, you'll glue down the floor. Here, the preparations have already been made. There's OSB in place. We will be able to glue the wooden floor directly on top of it. But first, we have to place our order. Therefore, you will have to measure the space and add around 10% as cut loss. When installing the wooden floor, make sure the subfloor and the space in which you work are dry. This space also has to be heated. When installing the parquet on screed, you should do a carbide test to check whether the screed is dry. In this case, we'll be installing the floor on top of OSB, so this isn't necessary. We'll check if the space is level with a long flat bar. The floor needs to be level in order to smoothly place the wooden floor. Big differences will eventually be visible in the floor after installation. First, you have to sweep the floor to take away the dust and dirt. Then use a vacuum cleaner to remove the fine dust. Otherwise, these will end up in the glue and under the floor. Meanwhile, move the boxes of wooden floor indoors. It's important to leave the floor in its package one week beforehand in order to let the floor get acclimatized in the room. This way, the wooden floor can adapt to the temperature and the moisture in the room. Engineered flooring used to be installed in the same direction as the light. Nowadays, this isn't necessary anymore. And you can, depending on the space, choose how to install your wooden floor. In this case, we've chosen to install the parquet against the light as it fits better with a number of elements in the space, such as the stairs and the long wall. When you've determined the direction, you'll have to determine where to start and also calculate if you can start with a full plank. Draw a plan and add the measurement of all elements in the room. Measure and calculate if you'll end up with a narrow plank. In order to do so, divide the length of the space by the width of the plank. Then multiply the numbers behind the point by the width of the plank. And then you'll know the width of the final plank. If you know everything's okay, then you can start installing the floor. Okay. Before you start, you should measure everything again to make sure you come out even. We are fortunate in this case. We can start by using a full plank at the window. This is, from an aesthetic point of view, most pleasing. And we finish with an acceptable width for the final plank. If this isn't the case, you'll have to measure so you can, for example, cut the first plank and end up with an acceptable width in the back of the space. Mix the different packets beforehand for a beautiful pattern. Install two rows without using glue. Use wedges between the wooden floor and the wall. The wooden floor can't touch the wall because the wood may expand with time. Now you can cut out all the indents so you can start without encountering too many obstacles. Always start with two rows. By putting a second row in place, you're certain the first row is straight. We have now laid out two planks without gluing them. That's a check to see whether we come out even. I've also drawn a line next to the planks. That line has two functions. First, we can glue till that line. And secondly, it's an extra check to see if we're working in a straight line. Take away all the planks as you can start gluing. Keep the planks, certainly those you've cut to size, in order. It makes it easier to put them back in place. Then you can start gluing the zone you've marked. Always use a wooden floor glue. 
the floor manufacturer will be able to recommend the best glue for the wooden floor. When gluing, always use a notch trowel, which is appropriate for parquet glue. These usually have triangular teeth. Glue the floor to the pencil line you've just drawn. Then you can start installing the wooden floor. Lay the first row in the glue. Make sure you have put a wedge between the window or the wall and the wooden floor. This will ensure the same expansion joint. Leave the wedges in place to the end. Otherwise, the rows will shift when installing the following row. After the first row, you can lay the second row in the glue. Connect both rows by using a hammer block Make sure the joint is closed. If everything has been installed properly, this row should be level with the pencil line. If this is the case, you can start gluing the next row. Now you don't have to draw a pencil line anymore. If you use a little bit too much glue, you can use it for the following row. You have to be very careful with the glue. If you spill it on the wooden floor, you should wipe the stains off immediately. Don't wait until they're dry. Tap this row in place. Place the hammer block in a way not to damage the joint and the upper edge of the parquet. If you damage the joint, the next plank won't fit as well. When you've installed several rows, put some boxes on the part that's already been glued. Doing so puts pressure on them into the glue and the parquet won't shift anymore. I've used all the planks I've laid out. I will lay new ones out. It's the best to mix several packets in order to create the best result. As parquet is a natural product, there can be differences in color in the different packets. By mixing the planks, you avoid areas with the same color scheme. Besides all the long planks, every box also contains a short and a medium length plank. These are used when you start installing in a stretcher bond, or you can use them as a plank you start or end with. When installing a wooden floor, you should sit on the parquet. Doing so avoids it shifting while tapping. Keep putting packages or a different large stable weight on the planks to give the gluing more firmness. We apply the glue strip by strip. You can also choose to go wider, two strips or three strips, but certainly no more because glue has a certain open time. Open time is the time when the planks must have been laid in the glue. You'll also have to cut the width of the final row to size. The easiest way is by using a plunge saw with rail, but you can also use a hand saw or a jigsaw.
The final plank only fits correctly by using a pull bar. Use the short side to put it behind the last plank. Use a hammer to tap the other side of the pull bar. Make sure the joint is closed properly. As the large area has been entirely finished, we can start with the stairs. The stairs will be covered with the wooden flooring as well. First, we put the planks on the elevation without gluing. Mark the final plank and cut to size. When cut to size, try to fit the stair profile. Normally, it should cover the joint and the top end of the upper plank. Put some wedges between the planks and the wall in order to maintain an expansion joint there as well. Mark the sides of the stairs and cut on that line. Disassemble all the planks, as you will have to glue them to the subfloor. First, fix the riser. Use a polymer kit as the upstand has been fitted with plasterboard. Make sure it's leveled with the floor. Use the parquet glue again for gluing on the OSB. Just as before, glue row by row. When you've installed the first plank, you should check again if it's been installed properly. It should be in the same line as the parquet beneath and with the upstand. Measure it. That's why we place several wedges behind the plank on one side. Don't forget the wedges on the wall side. You should glue the last plank to the plank on the riser as well. Whilst the glue is drying, put some extra weight on the stairs so the planks can't shift anymore. The parquet has been installed and you can use it immediately. Wait until the glue is dry before walking on the floor. That takes about 24 hours. You don't have to oil or varnish the parquet. That's already been done in the factory. The only thing to do is to maintain the floor using the appropriate products. Refreshing now and then using the proper product ensures that the parquet lasts. We use a stair profile to finish the stairs. Cut it to size. Remove the sharp edges using a file or sanding paper. In the corner, you should cut the profile on the bevel, which provides the best result. The profiles have openings to fix them with screws. You'll have to drill beforehand as you're working on the edge of the plank, and of course, you'll want to avoid your new wooden floor splitting. Use wood screws to fix the profile. In order to finish the transition between the floor and the wall, we install skirtings. These also hide the expansion joint provided between the floor and the wall. These skirtings are straight, so you'll have to cut the outer angles on the bevel. The inner angles don't have to be cut on the bevel, as they're installed straight onto each other. Then glue the skirtings to the wall. Use a polymer-based glue. This adheres to most bases certainly to this painted wall and to the skirtings made out of MDF. After installing the skirtings, the floor installation is finished. Thanks to the wooden floor, we now have a warm and comfortable feeling in this room. In order to maintain it, there are some things you can do. Make sure to attach felt pads underneath furniture and chairs, and it's best to take off your soccer boots before entering the space.